In this episode, our code will begin to take shape as our player will begin to be drawn on the screen and the positioning of a player will be correct. But to do that, we need to create two new variables. The first of these is the variable player x. This will determine the player x for us because normally in a normal platformer, that's not pen, you, your x position and y position are determined right here. Um, but we can't do that because we don't have an actual costume. So we need to create that ourselves. So the other variable, of course, will be player y. Now, before we um, can even place the player somewhere, we need to draw the player. So let's just create a custom block that does the player in a certain position, let's say the player at x, y. And we can make that run without screen refresh because we want it to do this very fast. Okay, so for this game, I'm just going to draw a simple square. So all we need to do to do that is draw it from x plus a number to x plus a number, and this will be y. And then we're going to draw it to y take away a number. And this number will be um, the height, or the size, let's say. So how this is working is because we're drawing from the x plus the size, so we're going from like, let's say it's at 0, 0, and we're going from here to, and with a y plus the size, and then we go to y take away the size. So we're drawing the right side of it. So we can just duplicate this thing and remove this, make it the same y, and to draw the, in this case, we're going to draw the bottom. So one of these will need to be negative because the x position is now changing. So I'm going to, I'll um, get this up and then I'll be right back. So, now we have the four lines drawn around our player, and we can just quickly test this by typing in some values, let's say 0, 0, and then 10 for the width of the player. And as you can see, we have a little square drawn. But it's a little bit thin, so I think we're going to turn up the size of the whole thing to a slightly greater value, which this is still running. It's about that size, so that's pretty good. Now, we can start to just pick... I'm just going to pick the color black for now, because we don't really need to make this look pretty yet. So, now all our things are black. So, to put, the, put this player into the main loop, we have to stick it in the forever loop, right after the render. And, as you can see, it renders right there. But... As we said, we wanted it to render at player x, player y. So now, as we can see that, it renders in that position. But there's one problem. It doesn't interact with our camera y variable. So if we change our camera, Because we defined our script right here in the draw for line at the camera x and camera y, if we change the camera x and camera y, it'll automatically change the player. 
So the player is moving individually of the camera X and camera Y. So we're getting pretty far along now. So we can start um, creating the platforming script. So the first thing we'll do is create an SX variable. And we can make this, let's just make it a public variable, and same with SY. And very simply, I'm just going to code my simple platforming engine, which is um, change SY by negative 1. And then if up arrow pressed. Then we set SY to 13 or so. And then we set SX to a little shortcut I learned here was if you do right arrow, take away left arrow. And then you multiply that by um, 1.5. This will give you um, a negative 1.5 or 1.5 depending on which key is pressed. So this helps, this works because if the right arrow is pressed, the right arrow boolean will return as 1, and if it's not pressed, then it will return as 0. And the same with the left arrow. So we can just do change sx by this, and then set x sx to times sx times 0.8 and this what this will effectively do is just slow down our player so it's at a, a speed so if I run this you can see that the SX changes and it goes up to like 6 and the same with the left arrow and if I'm not holding anything it'll go down to 0 so with the S well, now when the player spawns We'll want to make sure that the SX and SY are always zero at the very start. This is a mistake I see commonly because when a lot of times in platformers, when the character dies, um, it'll respawn at the same momentum and it'll fly out of the spawn area, and that's we don't want that. So all we need to do now is create the. We'll want to move this above it because we want the render to happen at the very end of the frame. And by this. Now we're gonna want to make a variable called jumping. And this will determine if we're even in the air at all. So jumping is naturally set to one because we're obviously probably spawning in the air. And set jumping to one if we are jumping. But we need to make sure that jumping is zero if we can we need to make sure it's zero to jump so uh, so we need to check if it's jumping now the next thing we are going to do is make our collisions so we're going to create a custom block called touch y and one called touch x and both make those run by that screen refresh. So touch X would go right after our X collisions, and touch Y would right, go right after our X Y movement. But we also must remember that the S X and S Y are just our speed. So we need to change the player Y by X by the S X, and do the same with the player Y. So. Now we have a pretty effective script, but it's going to look like just like this. And we must remember to set the player X and player Y to our spawn position. So that, as we can see, it kind of works, but we're just stuck at the bottom of the screen, infinitely falling. Now we need to make some platforms, but we can't do that without touch X and touch Y scripts. So the touch x script, or the y script, would normally go if touching something, eh, um, repeat until not touching this, 
and then you would change the Y or the player Y by the SY divided by the ABS or the absolute value of SY and then zero take away that. And this is simply because if the SY is positive, then this, let's say it's six, then six divided by six is one. So it's a positive. But if it's negative, then we have negative six divided by six, which is negative one. So this will tell us if, it, uh, us if it's positive or negative. So all we need to do this is this, and then if we move out of it, then we just um, set the SY to zero so we don't fall through the platform at some point. And then we need to make it so the we need to set jumping to zero. But this only can happen if the SY is less than um, if it's less than zero because if we're hitting something on the ceiling we don't want to stick to it. So if the SY is less than zero, then we set the jumping to zero. But we can't use this touching script because we're not using sprites. So we're going to have to make our entirely different touching thing, which is going to be with our touching variable, which are going to be if touching equals true. And we just repeat until not touching equals true. But we're going to have to make a touching block that'll check that for us, which we would have to put right before we check anything. So we can just copy this script pretty much. I put in the touch x, just change the player y to player x, and sx, sx, and sx. Now we don't need this part because we're not hitting it on the top. So now we have a pretty good platforming script, but our collisions don't work. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. So in the next episode, we're going to cover how we're going to use a list to, um, to save all the values of where the lines are drawn. And then the player can collide with them using some clever math. So see you next time.